You know, it is hard to choose the best do-it-all bike. The bike that wants to do single track but able to do 90 miles an hour on the freeway. The bike that can flick around in gnarly jeep trails and single track while holding proper road manners. This is why I picked each bike in its own category. Everything from comfort to the all-betweener, the single track monster to the bike that is just great for beginners and the bike that is just perfect in every way for its price. This was a very tough video to make and there are just way too many bikes to choose from. So I had to separate them into its own category. Almost every single dual sport it's good in its own ways. And I kind of wanted to talk about uh, the top five dual sports of my pick. Each of these dual sports are going to have their own specific uh, purpose, you know. So my very first pick, you guys probably already know what it is, the DRZ 400. Yeah, so I'm going to say the DRZ 400 is definitely my very first pick. Let's be honest, man. The DRZ 400 is just the ultimate do-it-all machine. It feels very dirt bikey. It's super dead reliable. I know people who have over 30, 40,000 miles on a single, single top end. And the good thing about the DRZ 400 is, you know, you have the E-Class, the S-Class. You know, the DRZ can do a lot of really hard technical trails. I've seen them out in Colorado on really steep stuff and, and even our single track. So just a reminder, these bikes are not in a specific order on which is best out of the five. I just happened to pick these five out of their own category, but for sure I could have not leave out the DRZ 400 out of this list and I think we all know that. One, just barely any, any maintenance have to be done on this bike. It's a dang easy bike to work on, very minimal technology and these things just go on forever. Parts are dang cheap and the main reason I picked it is you just get a lot of bike for just $2,000 used on Craigslist. So the initial reason is just cost to power ratio. Yeah guys, I mean I got the DRZ 400 um, and I'm not picking that bike because I own it. I, you know, I really got nothing else better to do. So I just look at bikes, research, and look at the forums, see their specs and stuff like that. For all it is, and the weight, the weight is actually is not even that bad. I have the 701, and the DRZ feels lighter than this. But the DRZ is my, one of my first picks because of the cost. Cost to what the bike is, what you're getting. So how about the second choice? Now this might shock some of you guys, but seeing what this bike can do and also being new rider friendly, reliable, easy to control and also being the only bike you can ever have and need for everything in between with the exclusion of highway runs at 75 miles an hour and of course with an emphasis on single track, yeah it's gonna be the KTM and Husky FE 350 and EXEF 350. Let's move on to the number two. And it's in its own class. I'm gonna have to say the KTM and the uh, Husqvarna FE and the uh, XCW uh, the 350, or I'm sorry, the EXCF uh, 350. The reason I picked the 350 is because I believe that's the best of uh, both worlds. Like, you know, it feels really light. It feels great between the both. I written the 250, 350, 450 model and the 500 and 350 definitely has to be one of my choices a great bike it feels very light it feels like a two-stroke it definitely has a lot of power too it's not a your typical 350 power but at the same time it's it's nice easy going controllable power it's just something about the 350 just the way it designs and, and it feels how it feels you can definitely tell you're getting a performance light really light bike trail hop worthy check gnarly single track worthy check city hopper yep check forest road and logging road worthy check cruise at 70 miles an hour worthy check price tag and maintenance mm, not so much but at least you will save room in the garage as a do-it-all bike 
take it to the work on weekdays, go to the store and grab that bread that you forgot to buy yesterday. Trail explore and don't have to worry about the kind of single track you will get yourself into? Yeah, this is by means one of the top dual sports in its class. Uh, that part about uh, the KLX 250 on single track, the last thing I want is my bike to go down there and kind of push it up somehow. Yeah, that's the other bad part. I mean, the other hard part is just, just, you know, picking it up. I dropped it twice already on single track. Uh, I did two different single tracks. Well, this was tough between the TW200, WR250R, XT250, and other related entry-level duels. See, the WR250R has a high seat height and a hefty price tag, but a little bit more power than the KLX250. The TW200 is an awesome entry-level bike and an all-around keeper, but if you are serious about getting into the off-road for performance, the low seat height and the ergonomics might come at a cost. And the XT250? Well, the KLX250 handles better in every way for a tad bit more of a cost. See, the KLX250 can be grown into. It can, it can handle very tough trails with the exception of the power getting in the way in certain areas. It is more dirt biking than all of its brothers in this class and not to mention there are tons of mods in the market world for people who are looking to keep the KLX250. I couldn't leave out something from the 500 series. For the people who don't get much single track in, but have tons of logging roads to wide open desert riding to even using snow bike kits with great maintenance intervals for, let's say, performance dirt bikes, quote unquote. If I could only have one choice on one bike, it would be something from the 500 series. You see, I have elevation in mind when it comes to power. I also have exploring in mind and technical trails when you travel the unknown. So you want to be prepared. You also need to be prepared if you need to hit the highway speeds just to get back home if you find yourself in a rut. And I know there are many bikes that can do this, but only one comes to mind, and that is the Beta 500 Four Stroke. The big bore king, it's dead reliable, it feels crazy planted, it has great maintenance intervals for quote unquote performance dirt bikes, and there is a sense of pride in being a Beta owner, or so I'm told. See, the 500 is the do-it-all machine if you don't have much highway riding in mind, but you do want to reserve that feeling, then the 500 is definitely the bike to have. Sure, it might be ideal for logging and forest roads and even steep mining roads. Probably not the best tool for single track, although it's more than capable. But of course, if you don't have much single track around your riding area and Sometimes you need to hit the highway, I probably will look at the 500, and this is why the 500 Beta made this list. I had to leave this one for the end because I honestly think this bike is worth every dime. It is one step under an adventure bike and is one step under a single track bike. It is a bike you can explore the unknowns and ideal for highway use, although the comfort is nowhere near the GS 1200, but put a windscreen and you are all set. Maintenance is a whopping 6,000 mile oil change and heard the engine is dead reliable on this machine. It can handle hard abuse and it really likes to be revved out like a performance bike. The more you twist that throttle, the more it wants to go. Wow, look at that scenery, man. Just everywhere, it's everywhere. Which leads me to my fifth choice. You kind of want a bike to do it all. That unicorn bike, right? And I hate to say it, but I think the 701 is it. This bike can handle really rocky, you know, technical type trails. It could go 80 miles an hour on the highway. It's not ideal. But this is more of a go out, explore. If you find yourself around single track, this bike will do it. It will do everything. It's the all betweener. The 701 and the KTM 690 Enduro. But this bike is the ultimate exploring bike, man.
If you want to explore, get this bike. They did some really steep, uh, this was a really steep trail into the summit. Some old mining trail or pass. Well, once you're all done, just hop on the road and you're all good. You know? Well, let me know what you guys think are the best top dual sports or even the crappiest dual sports. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. Go ahead and place them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And if you guys like my video and content, hit that bell button and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on my next video.